and Peggy Batten, also known as Margaret Batten, a philosopher and bioethicist at the University of Utah. And I'm Brent Caius, a psychiatrist and bioethicist at the University of Utah. We're here to introduce our article, Physician Aid in Dying and Suicide Prevention in Psychiatry, A Moral Crisis. It has just been recently published by the American Journal of Bioethics. So Brent, you're a psychiatrist. Of course, you can help most of your patients most of the time. That's a good thing about modern psychiatry. But I'm wondering if you ever see people with mental illness whom you just can't help. Unfortunately, I think I do, at least from time to time. Are things really terrible for those people? Well, they certainly can be, though not always. People's symptoms fluctuate over time, and sometimes even though people have symptoms that we can't treat, they learn how to tolerate or manage those symptoms. Mm -hmm. Even so, I think there's a small minority of people who have very severe symptoms that we can't do much about. That's hard to hear. But, you know, when we talk about physical illness and where physical illness is terminal, and most often we're talking about terminal cancer, we now as a society in nine states in this country, as well as the District of Columbia, and also in a number of European countries, permit a physician to provide aid in dying when that person earnestly wishes it and there's nothing else that can be done. It's rare, but it's, I think, really important to people say for a sense of security that things won't be even worse. Right. Do you think we should do that in psychiatry for these people for whom we cannot do anything? I, I don't know. I think it creates a really significant moral dilemma. It does seem to me that the main justification for allowing physician aid in dying in cases of terminal illness is that people are suffering severely and interminably and they want to be able to do something about it. But to the extent that people with mental illnesses can suffer severely and interminably as well, then I think it sort of makes sense for them to have access to physician aid in dying too. Isn't that a real problem for a psychiatrist's commitment to suicide prevention? I think it is, although the problem is a sort of nuanced one. You've argued, along with a lot of other people, that physician aid and dying and suicide are not the same thing, and I think that's true in a lot of respects. But the fact that we're so focused on preventing suicide in psychiatry in my view, betrays the fact that we, we think that people's judgments about the reasons that they have to end their lives can sometimes be wrong. Um, that is, it seems to involve judgments about how severe someone's suffering has to be before it's a sufficient reason to end one's life. And yet, in somatic illness, in physical illness, we allow these judgments to be made by the person himself or herself but not in mental illness. Right. Why not? Do you think we have a problem? I think we do. 